All right, I'm Adam with B Atlanta. We're here with Imagination Head. Uh, they are one of the bands playing uh, the March 18th show at Pick a Floor Studios, um, which is a rock science revival show. And it's also um, a B Atl uh, an Atlanta blog show, Atlanta blog showcase. Um, you guys got contact. Who did you get contact with for that show? Was it Moon Pluto? <laughs> well, they were handpicked by one of the all one of the blogs all exactly. Them, I mean, yes. We all voted. All them, yeah. It was the Atlanta <laughs> Moon and Pluto, um, latest disgrace, and shot from guns. We all voted, and oh, you guys cool. were one of Thanks, y'all. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know about that. Cool. Democracy. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, all of the it members works. of the blogs voted, and you guys were one of like. 12 bands to make it so okay. paid everybody off. <laughs> yeah. That was a good decision. Uh, we got $100, I swear. That's well, good. Small system works. So, why don't you guys just introduce yourself, tell us what you play in the band. Again, this is Imagination Head. You want to start? Sure. Uh, my name is Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> play guitar. <laughs> when I'm not rapping. I, go, I also go by the fence, too. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm Kara. And I play flute and I sing back up. And my name is Puma and I play uh, drums. JR, acoustic guitar. Aaron the Great, <laughs> keyboards. Oh is Puma your real name? Oh yeah, Nick is missing. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. name is Nick. I'm not really here, but I play bass. Yeah, he's too cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we're missing a member, the bass player? Yes. Yeah, the bass player couldn't make it. He's out of town. It's his birthday. Ski ball game. Um, yeah, Puma. Uh, well, Puma Kawa is my real name. Cool. Right? Sure. We call him Puma Time. Puma Time. Puma Time. Red pants. Yeah. Red pants. Yeah, I have purple pants on today, but sometimes I wear red. Pants. It's a good <laughs> conversation piece. Puma is like one of the coolest names. It is. I mean, I have, that's why. He likes it when you call him Puma. And they're making good. <laughs> and if, you see, if you can see his shoes, yeah. I can, <laughs> and he pulls it off because he also wears Puma. That's true. That's pretty cool. Where you name? <laughs> <laughs> JR tennis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys released an album on off um, just a couple, of, uh, well, it's just a month ago almost now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, January about. 29th, February 1st or so. Tell us a little bit about that album. Mm. Uh, the album's called uh, <laughs> On Off, and uh, we probably worked on it for uh, over a year. Uh, we started off as a DIY project trying to see if we can uh, make a record just kind of by ourselves without having to spend. A lot of money, and, um, you know, paying the, uh, a studio and a producer to do it all together. And uh, we did uh, most of the recording at Wonder Root, Wonder Root Studios up the street. Uh, so we were able to utilize the, uh, the community, uh, not for profit studio. Um, and so a lot of it was kind of done by ourselves. But we just kind of figured out that we were having trouble mm -hmm. doing it ourselves and ran into some pro problems. It was a learning experience. And uh, finally, we, we found a guy, uh, Rob Gal, to help us engineer it. So the, the rest of it uh, was engineered by Rob Gal. And <clears throat> was that outside Wonder Root? Uh, yeah, we did. We still did mm -hmm. the actual uh, recording at Wonder Root. And, um, and we did a lot of the overdubs and other stuff uh, on our own at other, other locations. But the, the, the secret the locations. Secret, secret uh, undisclosed mm -hmm. locations. <laughs> but the, uh, main, uh, the main core of it was recording at Wonder Root. Yeah, and, and, and the thank you for that. Oh, so and the producer brought like a lot of his own mics and right. equipment. So like, right. we used what they had at Wonder Root, but then we used some other stuff too. But, that was Who produced it? Was it the same guy? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, Rob Rob Gal. Okay. Yeah, produced slash engineer. Uh, yeah, he did both. Right. Brent, yeah, Brent uh, Bisbee did a lot of uh, the post production stuff, mixing, mixing wise. Rob did a lot of the miking, and Brent did a lot of the mixing afterwards. And Aaron did the art. Aaron did the art. <laughs> yeah. the art for the album. Yeah. Yeah. And then our friend Nathan Morris did uh, like design for the uh, text. And cool. Now, I mean, you originally started as a solo artist in Memphis, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How long has the current six-member lineup been together? Here, when did you? I guess it was like. Maybe like it was early fall, yeah. No, I'm not really sure. Yeah. yeah. Of and we tried a few. Uh, Aaron had always wanted a uh, another like, girl background or backup singer. Or whatever you call it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I've just been playing with a bunch of blinkers. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally and, got my girl. But we tried out a lot of uh, 
like random people that we'd find through Craigslist or something. And um, like we had one girl that she just would not sing. It was like she had the microphone, and we were like, "Okay, we're gonna try it," and, and she just like would just sit there and not do anything. Kind of whispering. And we're like, "Were you uh, like, singing on that?" Yeah, I sang the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I wish you could have heard it. Carrie had been in bands and stuff, so she was confident and able to just. You know, I felt I felt the pressure out. to produce right away. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. She wants mm-hmm. to rename the band Kara and the imagination had. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we're thinking kind of, for it. We're thinking about <laughs> it. Kara and the rest of these guys. Yeah. <laughs> cut out the end. Kara. Some other jokes. <laughs> and other musicians too. <laughs> yeah. I mean I think it would probably be huge and just <laughs> <laughs> Just an idea. So Was her addition like a new piece? Like a new mm-hmm. did you have those parts written already or was it all like an all new like you said, you play flute, right? I think mm-hmm. Was the flute new to the band? Or? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. And then some of the vocal parts you, you guys have been doing, but yeah. needed another, you know, yeah, another you know, voice on them. They were over, like dubbed harmony. on the on the album, and right, I kind right. of fill in the gaps that they can't do live right. without she writes her a additional person. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, I guess I make up the flute stuff. So. Mm-hmm. But it's cool. It gives us a chance to make it live serve sound more like the recording because we do have we're very heavy. Uh, vocalist and I do some backup, Aaron does backup, um, that it actually gives the live show a, a quality that sounds more like the record and just gives it a better experience because yeah, there's uh, more harmonies to do. So it's, yeah, it's a like, great addition. Yeah, you know, like the last track, for example, um, <laughs> Aaron sings like what, three or four different <coughs> ones, like, tracks on top of each other, so mm-hmm. live it doesn't have that. The kind of part depends on that. That's, yeah. That's not too bad, but. Yeah, and then I I joined like a little little over a year ago. Uh, I was a little drummer, and then Nick Nick joined about two Pretty years soon. ago, or maybe a year and a half ago. Like yeah, that. not too too much before you. Yeah. So yeah, we were without a bass player for a while. We were trying the whole project. And like, yeah, maybe we don't need a bass player. Still have a drummer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what what we're, what our direction was, but I think it's it's nice that we're now fully it was a spinning <laughs> yeah <laughs> spinning <laughs> uh, we're fully complete no yeah maybe maybe we were trying to not to fit the mold of a typical band, but mm-hmm. it just it never worked. Do you picture any more members coming on? Any more instruments? There's no. there was a guy that uh, <laughs> she's uh, pretty quick now. <laughs> there's a guy I there's work no with. That, <laughs> there's a guy I work with that plays uh, horns that was. You know, just talking about it. it'd just be kind of neat to throw some on top. Yeah, you know? yeah, I think we're interested. Maybe in... on a recording or something. Yeah, guest musicians, it. but nothing. Too. Yeah, guest musician or something. That'd be fun. A six-piece brass band. <laughs> Would you guys consider yourself a pretty collaborative band? Like everybody contributes, or do you kind of one person oh, yeah. no, comes it, up with an idea and like, draw on it? Or... When I write the lyrics and the um, the beginning of the song, like you know, I'll have parts and then. Those parts will change um, a lot. Like the lengths of the songs will change a lot through a lot of times short. playing with the band. A lot of times they're short. <laughs> yeah. Although there's one right now that um, everybody thinks is missing a part, mm-hmm. and so I'm like at home trying to <laughs> figure out this imaginary part that you know the ideal you know, but you know you're trying to make it organic writing Can't process it, too. But it's but there. It, yeah. yeah. It's just, so. Uh, but like yeah, another one of our new songs, Vince came up with like a bridge within like two minutes. Like I was like, <laughs> I don't know how to get to this part from this part, and he was like, you know, so I don't really know theory, and um, you know, I know the basic chords, things like that. But beyond that, I'm you know, I don't Sounds know keys good. and <laughs> things like that. Yeah. So. So you guys came on with on off um, about a month ago. Are you still writing new material after that, or? Yeah, we I think we have almost new material for a whole other record. Wow. <laughs> so it's. Uh, yeah. But I think because it, it took uh, a year to make mm-hmm. this record because we were trying to do it ourselves. Yeah, it's pretty much been uh, a whole new creative process after that. So we're, do you have plans we're, to make another album quicker, or pretty soon? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, depending. I think depending on finances. I think that's. Oh, yeah. 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 We yeah. still have to work out some kinks on some of the new songs. Yeah. yeah. But it is exciting, like, yeah, just um, having a set band and just being able to go in and we've already practiced it and just do it rather than record a little bit here a month later, record a little, you know. Um, we've found this guy who has a studio who um, 
it'll just be like an all day sort of, you know, maybe like a few weekends that are in a row, just eight hour days, and just be able to knock one out real quick rather yeah. than, you know, dragging it out like the last one. But I think it's surprising that the, the record on off is still cohesive enough, even though it took, uh, you know, different songwriting periods and recording at different periods, but it's still somehow all kind of came together and it's not like a cohesive uh, unit. Well, well, a few tracks almost cut. Like, we cut a yeah, few we tracks. did. We mm -hmm. we trimmed it down quite a bit. <laughs> it was like 16, 18 yeah, songs. to make it actually make sense. <laughs> like a yeah. pay. It's almost like a double album. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's cool though. I think people like it when your album has a lot of songs on I do. <laughs> you do? Yeah, I think that uh, it could... I Sometimes know. people come out with like, you know, seven, eight song albums. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, um... <laughs> but yeah, so, sometimes you listen to the album, sometimes you can tell, and you're just like, that song was put in there as a filler, because they're, they're trying to yeah. fill it out. But, yeah, we, we had to cut it, every song is... Uh, thought it needed to be important. Yeah, and there's, I mean, I felt good about, like, there was one song that we cut that um, we all really like as a song, but the recording just didn't do it justice. Like, you know, the, just the sound quality, and just there were things about, like, the sound of the snare that would bug somebody, you know, and it's yeah. just like, just being truthful to, we'll hmm. redo it. Have you played it live? Like, yeah. Yeah, we'll it's play it almost every yeah. show, so it's, it's like... Yeah, favorite live song. So. Yeah, I was gonna Into ask the him. Sun. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I know so, that one. Yeah, it's not, we could re record it for the next one, too. Right. It's yeah. a really good song. But yeah, just, you know, being trying to be truthful about, like, you know, it's like, I really want this song to be on this album, but if people have a problem with the way it sounds, I'm not going to put it out there and <laughs> represent it like that. So. What would you tell a person that's never heard your music? Like, um, if you're talking about a party. Christmas time at Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stomp and Stammer said we sound like uh, Christmas music on acid. Or, uh, no, 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 yes, that would that, <laughs> that, have been nice to say. Yeah, yeah like, it's just uh, Sesame, Street Sesame Street Christmas songs. songs. Yeah, yeah. Sesame Street Christmas songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's not what it is. Like yeah, yeah, I mean, all the, the elevator pitch, I guess, is like Flaming Lips meets Wilco meets Built to Spill meets, you know, a lot of the... Uh, kind of cornerstone indie stuff, you know what I mean, but um, yeah, it's hard, it's really hard to define your music, mm -hmm. we've yeah, gone through I mean, different, uh, I was talking to Chris about it, and I have like a very Beatles kind of feel to me, mm -hmm. alright, there's a lot of vocal, vocal yeah, it's, harmony, yeah, it's definitely pop, pop, and uh, focus on the songwriting, but also the, uh, the atmospheric parts, as well, when well, we sometimes we get that it's kind of folky psychedelic, even though psychedelic has a lot of connotations from the '60s, but it's not really yeah. that exactly. But yeah, maybe. The, well, that's what for like the, the mainstream guy. listener, like people who don't listen to indie music. I mean, like if I ever am like playing a track at my work or something, you know, secretly trying to listen to a new mix <laughs> that someone yeah. sent me or something, they're like they think it's like '60s music. Mm -hmm. So for mainstream listeners, that's like how they interpret right. it, yeah. but they like it. So. I, mean, I think it's very cool. Like it definitely has a folky feel, a psychedelic feel, and, mm -hmm. and Beatlesque. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, when Don Sebastian like, is a band that like I used to love, and like I remember yeah. asking Nick, who's our bass player, and he said they're his favorite band, and so that makes a lot of sense. That like, they have Bell a lot Sebastian of members too, fans okay. in the band. Mm -hmm. Bell and Sebastian is really like oh, yeah. fourteen people in the band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they yeah, pictures are. Hilarious. I could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> no. right, there's like 10 yeah, they have a lot of instruments. No, that's very cool. I mean, I think it's awesome to like you guys have that kind of '60s feel. I mean, if that's how you want to describe it, but very folky, psychedelic, very cool. Yeah. So we just you know want everybody to check it out on iTunes. You know, just look up Imagination Head. And it's on Amazon as well, so I'm just pretty sure. Yeah, yeah Amazon. At least you can sample songs Amazon and get a feel for what it is, and then you'll know yeah. what we are. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys have a lot of press out for yourselves too. If you just actually yeah. Google Imagination Head, right. and you come up on quite a, quite a few different sites, reviews mm -hmm. of your album on off, which is available on iTunes, like you just said. Right. And you guys said you had a show coming up this Wednesday, right? Which uh, people may or may not. It, 
may or may not have already passed by the time they see this interview. <laughs> oh, but, uh, okay. but then we have the Pick Floor show, obviously. Yeah. So March 18th on, so. at Pick the Floor Studios. Right, yeah, that's gonna be about. sounds like an exciting show. Have you guys heard of the other bands before? Curious and Shadhouse Rats? No, I like I like them though. I, I looked them up. Yeah, we looked them up. Listen to the mm-hmm. music. Yeah. So we're excited. Really cool. We'll play with them as well. Yeah, I think it's gonna be like a pretty eclectic show. That's good. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> lots of like different lots of talent from different styles, you know? Yeah. I can definitely see how we like relate to them though. Like the Shadows for Rats, the TV's giving you cancer. That song like, feels like that kind of thing. And then yeah. the other one, like, they're more like chilled, chilled out, kind of eth- ethereal. Is that word? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the brain word that's so cool that people throw around? Uh, Cerebral. Oh, yeah. Cerebral. Cerebral. <laughs> yeah, that's what, like that's that what we, our type of music is cerebral. 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 Yeah. cerebral. 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 <laughs> I like that one uh, review when they were saying, like, Imagination had to weave heady concepts or something. <laughs> heady. Yeah, I read that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Moon and Pluto, like, um, damn it. <laughs> Cerebral concepts. I think, was that the Moon and Pluto that said that? Yeah, I don't remember. I think it may have been. But, uh, there have just been that. so many reviews. So. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> really hard yeah. to keep them straight. <laughs> yeah, Rolling Stone, you know, there's Pitchfork is raving about us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. We got an 11 on Pitchfork. <laughs> the first 11 of all time. <laughs> the beat kind and of. And the move Radiohead out of the way. There's <laughs> yeah. only room for one head in the review section. So closing thoughts, anything you guys want to let people know about the show on March 18th um, or future plans for Imagination Head? Tour plans, album plans, well, show plans. I mean, we definitely gonna, <laughs> we're definitely going to start doing some regional touring mm. um, in the next half of the half a year. So probably, you know, short little trips to like, you know, uh, Tennessee or uh-huh. uh, you know, nearby states. And then I guess we need to get started on the, you know, the next album. Yeah. Um, Play more good uh, local shows. Yeah. You guys plan on trying to do it like a DIY thing, or are you gonna try to seek out a studio oh. and produce it? Yeah, I think it again depends on our money. Oh yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but we still probably want to try to do it as cheaply as possible. But <laughs> seems like our style. Yeah, I want to spend as much as oh, you know. Oh. I'm, <laughs> I thought we were going to spend a whole lot of money. Yeah. That's what my goal. Should I'll do it as much as possible. Even more important than if it's good. <laughs> start like a, a donation thing, like through Kickstarter or something. Like. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think yeah, we thought about that. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that yeah, a lot more lately. It seems like bands are actually having a good, yeah. pretty good response. Having yeah. 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 fans actually paying for their albums and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they give them like a free album. Yeah, they give them yeah, they give them yeah, 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 private shows for them. Anywhere from a private, sticker to a private show. Private <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> to a song written to about a, you. I've seen some yeah. people offer. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll put your name wow. in one of the songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> well, write, write their name on your forehead. Show. Tattoo. Have some t-shirts made about you with your band. Totally sell out. Well, cool. So I mean, March 18th. Where are you playing Wednesday? At the Drunken Drunk 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 Unicorn on Wednesday, um, we'll put something up about that. But March 18th yeah. at the Pick a Floor. I always have a hard time saying that. Pick a Floor Studios. Uh, have you guys been there before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. played there or just? Um, I played there with uh, my old band uh, Wig Hat. Um, okay. We played there. I think maybe twice. But yeah, it's a fun like you know, kind of casual kind of setting. Uh, art artwork on the walls. And, Cheap drinks, so that was nice. Cool, so that's gonna be on March 18th, and you can find information about it on Be Atlanta, Latest Disgrace, Moon and Pluto, and Shot from Guns. A lot of blogs. Cool. Imagination Head, thanks for coming. Cool, Thank thanks you. for having <laughs> <Thanks for laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye.